There you go. Right. Tu dois m'empêcher un truc. Hum. Tu joues tour C8 Non, après, cahier D5, machin, pris, euh, fou B5. Fou point Ouais, puis on prend tour B3, qui prend, puis on prend dame D7, tu dois jouer tour B4, je crois. Tour C4 quand même Tour prend, ah, dame, dame B4. Ouais. T'es un peu mieux. Ouais. Là Ok. Yes. Pas de problème. Non, pas de problème. Je suis avec toi. Merci. Merci. Ça va là Tu peux être dans le pays. Merci à vous. Bien. C'était ma première fois de jouer avec un joueur de haut niveau. Voilà. Un joueur du top 5 mondial. Et ça, c'est pas donné à tous. Alors c'est une fierté de voir les joueurs d'échecs locaux et je pense même qu'ils viennent d'autres pays de la côte ouest et qui viennent spécifiquement pour, pour nous voir jouer, pour me voir jouer. C'est vrai que c'est un grand honneur et c'est vrai que encore une fois ça, ça peut permettre aussi d'apporter un élan euh, pour le jeu d'échecs, pour les... à la fois pour les fédérations, pour attirer de nouveaux joueurs, de nouveaux talents. Et voilà, c'est comme ça que, que le jeu d'échecs grandit. Ah, F4. Ah, bon. Non, ça tient. You should know that Maxime Bashir Legrave is being covered right now, a documentary on him by French television. They're going to cover him here in this event and also later in Paris. And they've been taking him around, him doing extra stuff for the media. I know he was playing football earlier today against, in the hot sun, by the way, against a couple of youngsters uh, outside. So I, I don't know if this might have been the best preparation for him. And it's certainly not going to make good television if uh, they're favorite son loses in the very first round. So we'll keep an eye on that one. There's a lot of pressure on him to perform. Remember, he was the runner-up from last year after all, so the only way he can go is up in order to improve it, to win the whole thing. We'll see if he can deal with this pressure. Tout à l'heure, quand je serai absorbé dans la compétition, ce sera, ce sera pareil que d'habitude. J'aurai toujours à cœur de, de montrer ma place parmi, parmi ces joueurs. Voilà, mon objectif, c'est de gagner. Pour le moment, je me sens bien. Après, c'est difficile de prévoir euh, comment je vais euh, jouer, de que, à quel niveau je vais jouer avant la première journée. Après la première journée, j'aurai déjà euh, euh, des doutes euh, qui seront dissipés sur euh, mon état de forme, sur comment mes connexions marchent. Et voilà, si, si la première journée va, tout va. Merci infiniment, merci d'être venu à cet événement qui est vraiment, vraiment, vraiment historique. Pour la première fois, 
en Afrique. Un pays accueille le Grand Chess Tour, le circuit de jeux d'échecs le plus prestigieux au monde. Je voudrais remercier tous ceux qui se sont associés à la préparation et à la mise en œuvre de cet événement. Je ne saurais finir sans dire vraiment un grand merci. Je peux dire que notre pays est a des raisons d'avoir de la fierté, d'accueillir un événement d'une très grande portée. Nous pensons que là aussi, il y a un gisement d'action à faire pour que les jeunes de Côte d'Ivoire retrouvent non seulement de la sérénité, mais aient le goût de la pratique de, de, de sport intellectuel qui peuvent apporter beaucoup à notre pays. You know, whenever I think of Maxime, I think of the quiet joker because he has this very serene sense of humor almost, where he's not saying too much, but the little he says means a lot. Ah, but no, that's not bad yet, that's sure. That's sure. Oh, no, no. I feel like I'm going to fight now. I don't think Maxim has many, many enemies, because he's, uh, very friendly, uh, positive uh, person. I love the twinkle that's always in his eye when something occurs to him that's interesting, that's, that's intriguing. And he'll be searching for just the right way to make this point. And so he has the sense of humor that when you come to know him, you end up loving him. Alors, je suis supporter de Lyon. Après, donner un coup d'envoi, on a pu le voir. Mes qualités de footballeur sont très limitées, donc du coup, j'aurais même très peur de rater la passe. Да, мы оба 90-го года, и впервые мы встретились на чемпионате мира до 10 лет. Вот. И, и я тогда шел в лидирующей группе, но, ну, соответственно, тоже, но для меня было откровением то, что я ну, достаточно сильный по, по молодым меркам. Я достаточно высоко уже котировался, и я проиграл французу, который на тот момент, ну, в принципе, я, честно говоря, о нем не слышал. Вот. Но и с тех пор, конечно, я его запомнил, <laughs> и, и уже эта конкуренция продолжается. Ну, если не, не до сих пор, наверное, это было бы привлечение говорить, но, но в целом можно сказать, что мы встречаемся в турнирах практически всю сознательную жизнь. In Asia, he's very well known. Um, people knew that he was already a rising star back then, and he's in improving very quickly. Yeah, so Maxim and I, uh, we've known each other for a very long time. Um, I think the first time we actually met and played was in Cap Dag in 2008, I believe it was. Uh, we played, played a match there. I, I beat him. I think it was the semifinals. Um, it was a very tense match, uh, but that was the first time we met. Um, I would say it's something of a rivalry, but it's not super intense or super overbearing the way that I think, you know, if, if you look at, uh, well, I mean, anyone who plays against Magnus, for example, it's, it's much, there's, there's much more tension going on. Um, well, I, I would say Maxime is a very friendly guy, um, very, very proper. You, you don't generally, um, he doesn't say have temper tantrums the way that some people like Magnus will on occasion. Um, he's a little bit on the quieter side, I would say, but um, he's just overall a very nice guy. And I think in, in a world like chess, which is so competitive, um, it's, it's, a bit of, uh, it's a bit refreshing to have someone who is who's so sort of calm, even though I'm sure, you know, at the board, he's, he's definitely not. But uh, overall, he's, he's, he's pretty relaxed. Максим мне, в принципе, очень сильно импонирует, не только как прекрасный и очень сильный шахматист, но и как человек. Он очень искренний, очень открытый, очень добрый, то есть к нему всегда вот можно что-то спросить. Вот там вот такая ситуация, такая проблема, такой вопрос, он всегда придет на помощь. И ну, далеко не каждый шахматист uh, настолько искренен и открыт, как он. Well, obviously, Maxim and I talk mostly, uh, mostly about uh, chess. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the main takeaway for me is that he's very, very positive and, uh, and easygoing. At that time, it was a real carnage in my room. It depends. Quel sourire, c'est meuf. 
<rire> non, c'est un pote. Magnus est toujours le favori du tournoi, mais il y a au moins, euh, au moins cinq joueurs qui peuvent euh, prétendre à le remporter. Dont moi, euh, j'espère, même si le start n'est pas idéal. Après, il bon, y, a, y a encore quatre journées pour, euh, pour changer euh, le cours du tournoi. Well, he's certainly one of the best players on the planet, and he should absolutely qualify for the candidates. And the question will then become, will he maintain a certain stability and solidity that allows him to overcome all his challengers when the time matters? And for what I see with Maxime, from time to time, his creativity gets the best of him. Sometimes he's, he's such a genius. Uh, he's so instinctive and creative that he wants to create this kind of beautiful chaos on the board when sometimes you just have to be boring and solid and predictable. And I think that that's the balance he has to find so that he can be more consistent or decisive when the moment comes. He tends to play uh very principled so he picks certain openings he studies them and he plays them all the time and i think if anything having the lack of variety being unable to play all sorts of different openings is actually more of an impediment in terms of him trying to qualify for the candidates so i think the issues with maxime have very little to do with his personality and much more to do with his style of play but having said that um it is it is nice to see someone playing that style that um, really hasn't been seen, I wouldn't say, since the days of Gary Kasparov, where you had someone who would play one or two openings all the time, especially with black. So um, it, it is it is a very unique style, and I think in a way it's kind of nice to see it. Maximo always tried to to be very creative, and uh, I mean, the openings he played, they just simply, you know, just reminded me of me in the younger days. He, when he plays black with the black pieces, he doesn't uh, solidly play for draw. He plays open open game, which is a very uh, sharp line, uh, a sharp variation, the Sicilian, Neidorf, and it's quite risky. So maybe he should also work for looking for some more solid uh, weapon, you know, just to, to be solid with the black pieces. I know that at times he will play the, he will play the Neidorf, he will play the Grunfeld, and he knows that Everybody knows that, and uh, he makes the bet that even if he's out prepared, he will uh, make some decision. I will play something, and he will uh, make the bet that even though his position is probably worse, and maybe even a lot worse, that that his ability in, in such positions will uh, uh, will allow him to uh, to outplay his opponent still, and maybe that he should make. Uh, more of those decisions, maybe gamble, um, gamble a bit more and, and play a bit li less safely because that will lead to more fluctuations, but I think on the whole, give him better results. Yeah, this is going to be handshakes and there we have it. Maxime resigned, our first decisive result. Hikaru Nakamura wins in style with the white pieces. That's it, it's idea. game over. Uh, it's a uh, one careless moment. I mean, this after G4, he did not feel, but how could, could he not feel that the idea was G5, the threat was G5? Maybe correct a few things. Uh, I think it can go better and maybe uh, start winning some games. There are quite a few chess players that know how to move the pieces, I mean, just at a very top level. But when they meet at the chessboard, it's the decisive factor is their ability to, to, to sustain the pressure and uh, just to not to crack, you know, just as, as, as during the game, because it's, there's, there's many moments where things could go wrong. Well, Queen H5 is winning, Queen D1 is winning, Queen D3 is made in six. Oh, wow. I mean, every move yeah. that Magnus can choose this is just is, completely winning. This what is a completely weird move. crazy. I mean, like, Maxime was doing so well. You know, he, he was playing in the spirit of Nidoff, had this really great position and then messed it up. I think um, maybe a slight lack of killer instinct is a, is a, is a problem for, uh, for Maxime. But I've seen in tournaments that when he's, uh, when he's close to the goal, he... 
he um, gets there, but maybe sometimes he's, uh, he doesn't want it quite enough. You can beat one of the top players, and he, he has been on this position for quite a while, and he will still be there because he's really good, but, but to go from, you know, top 10, or even top five to number one, it's, 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 it's a huge uh, uh, challenge. It's, it's a giant, giant leap forward. So, and, and you have to start making sacrifices. You have to start you know, concentrating only on, just in this, on the goal. So, I mean, you should probably, you know, you should start sort of creating some, some sort of, not discomfort, but kind of a hunger. So just, it's just, just to, be, to be really angry with, with, with yourself. So this is, and, and, uh, and, and you know, Always try to challenge your own excellence. So this is it's basically every game. It's I want to win. I want to make the difference. I want to make the difference. So that's that's that gives you sort of the strength to go back and analyze. It's, it's you have to live with that. It, this is a strange blunder by MVL because G5 was so natural. It was played instantly, and I have absolutely no clue what he was thinking. Honestly, sometimes he just freaks out and does something absolutely crazy. And you think, why did you do that? You didn't have to do that. And he'll lose some game that just doesn't make any sense. And I just cannot understand this move from MVL. Clearly, the move after G4 was the follow-up G5, and I want to get to your king. So when he finds that blend of creativity with practicality, then I think you'll see that he has a chance to defeat anyone to challenging Magnus at the best, at the very top. He's, he always looks, he finds opportunities, so that's this again. But not opportunistic, but it's more like, you know, just finding resources, so that's, that's good, that's especially sharp tactics. So it's the, when he has to, you know, he just, he, he fights back and, uh, and uh, he could be dangerous to anybody. I mean, even Magnus, you know, can, can count few, few, few bad wounds received, you know, from, from, from uh, Maxim. Maxime Osher Legras with his second win of the day. Yep, coming back at the Frenchman. Perhaps he stopped making this documentary or they've finished <laughs> the filming him and now he's back into business. Well, from what I'm seeing, the most stunning uh, reversal that's going on is what's happening with Maxime Bashir Legrave. He started off this tournament really just playing very poorly, not up to his great standards. But all of a sudden, you see yesterday he won three games, got the full six points, and it just seems like the stars are aligning with him as he is catching a flow. And that's the key word again, flow. When things just start to go your way, you just feel so confident. They start coming out your fingertips. You don't need to give these kind of monsters a second life. So we got to keep our eye on him. I'm sure Magnus is aware. Yes, yes, yes. He's giving up every pawn, and this is just hopeless. And he's coming back. Oh, what a nice way to finish. 93 check with simplify the position. Maxime, oh. he turns around a lost position with a crucial game there against Wesley So. Very fast calculating chess positions. And Matt, obviously. But after knight f4, what is his oh, plan? There's he no has way no way of defending it. It's screen. over. Then he oh. That's it? Max. What a turnaround! <laughs> My God! Unbelievable! And he's extremely tricky because of his extraordinary um, calculating ability and also sense of uh, of dynamics. So close one! I think that Maxim really had messed he's up. Lost oh, he lost some time, time lost but it was already over. Oh, By this point, the king was coming to be safe. Ah, you had a seven in the end, right? Well, I think you know all the top players are going to see four or five move tactics. Maxim's ability to see. Uh, various tactics extremely quickly help him a lot. And I think that's also why he's so strong at Rapid and Blitz in particular. That's going to be an amazing seven games in a row. That's it. He's done it. Maxime Vacher Legrave. Pour l'instant, au stade de la remontada, j'ai mis le premier but de Manchester. Maintenant, faut voir comment se passe la suite. Voilà.
dans les tournois de Bills, il y a toujours, voilà, donc euh, il y a 9 parties dans la journée, c'est inévitable de, euh, de se sentir bien dans certaines parties, enfin, dans l'idéal, mais aussi il y a certaines parties où je me sens moins bien et où ça se ressent évidemment dans mes calculs, dans les coups de je joue. Après, je sais que mes adversaires, c'est la même chose, donc on est à égalité sur ce point-là. Then against Magnus, it was a very tense game. I think it could have gone both ways. He definitely could have repeated moves uh, right before the end. He didn't. Uh, his fighting spirit cost him dearly for once. His, his uh, play in chess is uh, certainly um, one of the main factors is that he's very, very confident. I would say that he's a great tactic. To, to achieve really great results without uh, taking risks is, uh, is hard. And uh, the case is often with people that, unless it's for the World Championship, people are not willing to, to take the risks that, that they need uh, in order to optimize their, their, um, their results. So I think, I think Maxim does that better than, than a lot of people, but he still has has a long way to, uh, to go there. He's very thoughtful uh, and he's very accurate. He's very precise. He's not the kind who just kind of makes things up. That is an ambitious move. So Queen H1 is the threat? Bishop H4 is actually winning. What? Yeah, Queen H1 is a big huge Because you can't threat. really stop Knight F4 and Queen H1. Oh my God. This, This is Maxime. Way... He's amazing. A <laughs> leader, I won't be able to revenge on him. Si, euh, si je lui mets pas la pression, alors que si je lui mets la pression, il peut en retour justement euh, voilà, sentir le souffle du deuxième se rapprocher. Mais toujours est-il que oui, la partie était très compliquée. Et puis à un moment, j'ai réussi, bon, à partir d'une position un peu délicate, à créer des problèmes. Et ce qui fait qu'ensuite, il a, il a, je pense, un peu pété les plombs, ce qui arrive souvent à des cadences aussi rapides. Et il m'a laissé développer une attaque beaucoup trop forte. There is still mid ideas. Oh That's tricky. But now he's no, just saying nice now. Yeah, yeah. uh, seen that, Maxime. He, you know, Maxime has solved like 80% of all studies. This is completely so lost he, for Magnus. He knows those, those things inside out, and Magnus is lost. Oh, okay, then. oh that's my God. It. That's an important win for that Maxime. That is it. Yes. And oh, you can and see. did you see that? Did you, you see the see. frustration? Magnus is so angry. J'ai battu Magnus, c'est bien. Euh, après, je savais que la journée était très longue. C'est-à-dire que voilà, même euh, même après. Euh, mes cinq premières victoires, évidemment, j'étais heureux. Well, Afam Jangland played him in a match last year, and, and Afam loved badly. And he said, this guy keeps seeing everything in like two seconds, right? Like he keep, he sees all tricks. Ну не только будущее, но и настоящее. Он один из сильнейших матестов мира и, в принципе, в любой момент может сделать еще один, там, скажем, небольшой шаг вперед и уже побороться за мировую корону, но в принципе он уже и так добился добился практически всего, поэтому ну один из величайших шахматистов шахматистов современности. I would say one word to describe Maxim. I'd probably say um, I would say intuitive or intuition. I mean, basically the intuition that he has um, is very very good. So that he's very intuitive. Maxim, tell us about your tournament. We know the first couple of days it didn't begin well, but then you started playing really well after that. What are your assessment? Uh, it's bittersweet because today I felt like not much was working uh, for a while. And uh, I mean, I bet Magnus, of course. I actually played a fine game against him, but um, a lot of games I were not. I was not happy with. I mean, I lost three games. I should have lost another one to to Basam. So. You know, um, at least I'm glad I recovered with a sort of fine win. He's won so many tournaments already this year and just added this one to his trophy case. Everyone, please give a big hand to world champion Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> Magnus, please. All the doppel.
Donc au final, voilà, le résultat final, il est assez logique. Euh, je pense pas. Euh, je pense que j'aurais malgré tout, tout pu faire mieux. J'étais pas satisfait de, de certaines journées et notamment la dernière. Où je pense que j'aurais dû euh, et pu faire beaucoup mieux. Donc euh, voilà. Après, Magnus était intouchable de toute façon. Rendez-vous à Paris pour euh, le Paris Grand Chess Tour en juillet. Cette fois, tu finis premier. Cette fois, je le gagne. <rire>